For those of you who might not know, there's been a recent video uploaded by Paul Carlson, <coughs> whose uh, YouTube handle is Mr. Carlson's Lab. And he titled it, Signal Tracer Troubleshooting Repair and Modification. And it's a Heathkit T3 signal generator. Well, I'll tell you what, this video immediately caught my attention. And he did, it's an hour and about an hour and 23 minutes long. I don't usually watch videos quite that long, but I'll tell you what, this thing here kept my attention throughout. It was the fastest hour and 23 minutes I've had in a long, long time. He did an outstanding job of diagnosing, repair, and modification of this T3 by Heathkit. And if you own one, and you're having the same symptoms that he shows in this video, uh, I highly recommend you watch it. But those of you who don't have that uh, signal generator, I mean that tracer rather, go ahead and watch the video anyway. You will learn things. You know, one of the problems we have with old test equipment is sometimes we have malfunctions. We don't even know that they're malfunctions. We always chalk it off to, oh, well, it's an old piece of equipment. I guess it's supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be making that noise. <laughs> It's old, you know? It's tube equipment. No. <clears throat> Wrong. You know, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, when I first started repairing radios. Uh, I had people tell me, but well, don't worry about that hum after I got it repaired and everything. You know, it was like, and you know, restored. They said, don't worry about that hum, John. That was pretty much normal for radios back in the 30s and 40s. Well, what do you mean hum is normal? No, 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 no. I set out to prove that wrong and none of my radios hum, none. When I got done, not a single one had a hum in it. So I don't know where these guys got their information from, but the same thing applies to test equipment. If it doesn't sound right, it's probably got a problem, fix it. And Mr. Carlson here, whose first name is Paul, he's gonna fix a, I believe it's a signal generator next. And he's gonna do some a series, he's gonna start a series in the future on how to use this older test equipment. To, to troubleshoot and repair, I imagine, tube radios, tube equipment of some kind. Well worth watching, people. Well worth. And here's the reason uh, I watched it. Uh, watch what happens. Now, he's here he's showing everybody how the uh, eye tube is glowing nice and bright. And then he immediately moves into this. So, let's check out the functions here. Turn the gain up a little bit, see how this works. And that sounds ugly. Well, I have the same exact problem with my T3. Check it out. As soon as I turn up the volume just a little bit, or the gain just a little bit, this is what we get. The exact same problem is what Mr. Carlson had. And I intend to repair this thing, or at least go through the motions of repairing it, exactly like he did in his video. So if you, and essentially what it boiled down to, as far as I could tell, <laughs> the way he was explaining it, and he did an outstanding job, is uh, we're having a buildup of uh, you know electrons on the control grid here, and they're being amplified out through the tube. So what he did in, in his video, for those of you who watch it, is he put a capacitor here, another capacitor in line uh, off the wiper of the gain control, and then he took a resistor, a grid leak resistor, and he put it to ground like that. Now, he used a 5.6 meg. All I have is a 4.7 that measures about 5 meg. So it'll work, it'll work fine. He said you could use up to a 10, and I don't know why he selected 5.6 megs. Maybe that's just, maybe it was just random selection on his part. He didn't mention that. I think he might have said he played around with it. I, I just, I didn't catch that. But anyway, hopefully when I get that capacitor in there, 0 0.01, which is this one right here, and my little 4.7 meg resistor, once I get those two uh, connected off of pin four, which is the control grid of this 12SH7 tube, just like he did in the video, hopefully that'll stop that noise. So let me get those two installed the best I can. 
Now here is what uh, Paul's uh, signal tracer sounds like after he added the grid leak resistor and the .01 microfarad capacitor to pin 4 of that tube. So let's take a listen and see how that works. So I'll move the gain control around. No problems whatsoever. We can hear our second troubleshoot procedure lurking in here. Okay, the really loud staticky sound is gone and then he moves on to a secondary problem he just mentioned. And but he he was able to get rid of that crashy staticky sound by installing those two components. And now let's listen to mine since I have the capacitor and resistor in now. Let's turn this baby on. You can see where I was, while we're waiting for it to warm up, you can see where all the yellow lines I had gone over this thing trying to figure out what the heck was causing that noise. And I had it zeroed down to somewhere into the, uh, you know, into the gain control, but I didn't know what to do about it. You all need to watch that video. It, it's, it's very, very good. And as you can see, I too have a nice bright eye tube on this one, where, where, which he pointed out in his video. All right, let's turn up the volume, see what happens. All gone. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, to have that kind of knowledge in my head, you know. Unbelievable. Well, I think this one here is fixed. And you notice there's no noise in this because I don't have the secondary problem that he had in his. Well, thank you, Mr. Carlson. I greatly appreciate it. Until next time. This is John.